Department of Education made the move today. It says this scheduling option will allow schools to help minimize the impact of COVID-19. The hybrid option is available through October 31st, but could be extended. Districts are still required to have 180 days of instruction and ensure virtual learning days include actual teaching. Meanwhile, all Aberdeen schools are going virtual. Late this afternoon, the school district sent the announcement to parents and community members. The district cites recent spikes in positive COVID-19 cases and surging quarantine numbers. The virtual learning transition begins Monday the 23rd. At this time, the plan is to return to face-to-face -face instruction on Tuesday, September 7th. The district will continue to require face masks when students and teachers return to school in September. The city of Amory has issued a state of emergency to help battle COVID-19. Visitors must wear masks inside city-owned buildings. The boss of each city department will decide if employees will have to wear a mask. You cannot rent a facility right now owned by Amory and events planned on city property are canceled until September 14th. Refunds will be available for previously owned events. Again, the state of emergency is in place until September 14th there in Amory. North Mississippi Health Services has launched a campaign to share accurate information about the COVID vaccine and to encourage Mississippians to get their shots. The North Mississippi Physicians Coalition for COVID-19 vac vaccination consists of a team of area physicians from Tupelo, Amory and West Point and all over the NM NMHS health system. The doctors are lending their voices and sharing personal experiences to help their message make a greater impact. So far, the group has released three videos this week, each one featuring a different medical professional sharing a story about how COVID-19 has touched his or her life. The doctors hope these personal stories can help move people to take the steps needed to help end the pandemic. There are days where I might be angry, angry that people aren't getting vaccinated because I know the pain it's causing them and the people trying to take care of them. There are going to be days where I feel sad because we've had an incredible loss of someone that maybe I knew or I knew about or I've dealt with a family. There are going to be days when I'm joyful because I've seen my team rise to a level I did not know was humanly possible. Coming up at six, we'll have more from Dr. Blanchard and other members of the coalition. Nursing homes continue to work tirelessly protecting patients. Facilities are pushing to vaccinate more staff members. Back in June, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services listed Aurora Health and Rehabilitation as one of four nursing homes in Mississippi to have at least 75% vaccination. They're now up to 99%. This comes after the company decided to mandate vaccinations. We see the need for it. Then we also see that people don't like things forced on them, you know, so um, you kind of go back and forth. Um, but to, to make progress, we feel like it was a good decision. And Harper says mandating vaccines among staff members is allowed by the company. Well, the CDC says anyone who received either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine will now need a third booster shot eight months after becoming fully vaccinated. Natalie Brand has those details. COVID booster shots could be widely available for millions of Americans beginning next month. We are getting indication that as time goes by, particularly in the context of the Delta variant, that the protection against infection is diminishing significantly. Studies from overseas show fully vaccinated people are beginning to exhibit worsening symptoms in their breakthrough cases. So in our process to stay ahead of this virus, we're starting to see it in infection. We're concerned we will see it in, um, in severe disease and we're planning ahead to stay ahead. But with millions still unvaccinated, President Biden announced nursing homes that receive Medicare or Medicaid payments will now need to ensure their staff is fully vaccinated. With this announcement, I'm using the power of the federal government as a payer of health care costs to ensure we reduce those risks to our most vulnerable seniors. The CDC says the number of people getting their first vaccine dose has fallen for five straight days. I did not get the vaccination just because I feel it's government pushed on, on the people pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I just feel it's poison in my eyes. But health officials say the vaccine is still the best way to prevent infection, hospitalization and death. We have a 
pandemic of a Delta virus that's ravaging our community, and we have a pandemic of misinformation. The U.S. had a total of 400,000 new COVID cases for the entire month of June and is now approaching nearly 2 million so far this month. Natalie Brent, CBS News, The White House. The governor says for now only recommending booster shots for people who receive the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. They say studies are being done to see if a booster is needed for those who got the Johnson and Johnson one dose vaccine. Well, in recent weeks, the effect of COVID-19 have been felt especially sharply in the law enforcement community. Two sheriffs and two deputies in the state have died of complications from COVID and there have been outbreaks in a number of jails. In Calhoun County, the sheriff's office is being proactive. The department has a 97% vaccination rate, and Sheriff Greg Pollan, like others, is encouraging all of his staff to get the shot. There's not an organized effort by the Sheriff's Association or, or any organization that I'm aware of right now to, uh, to push to get law enforcement um, vaccinated. I just know from talking to many sheriffs across the state by phone or text message that they are strongly encouraging their employees like I am to get the vaccine. Sheriff Pollan is also taking precautions in the jail. At least 16 of the 36 inmates there have been have been or will be vaccinated by tomorrow. Calhoun County residents roll up their sleeves today to get ahead of COVID-19. Baptist Calhoun City set up a pop up vaccine site at the National Guard Armory in Bruce. Residents there were able to drive in, get their shots without leaving their vehicles. Hospital personnel had a steady stream of people taking advantage of this opportunity today. We had some pretty heavy rain move through the Golden Triangle area about an hour to hour and a half ago, prompting flash flood warnings for much of Clay County, Central and Northern Lowndes County, and the far northern part of Octibaha County. That goes for about the next hour or so. Thankfully, the rain rates have come way down. We're still looking at some steady showers in Columbus, but the really heavy stuff has started to shift on out of here, which is some good news. Rest of the region, we're not looking too bad south of 82. We are watching more storms though develop on the north side of Jackson, and chances are we're going to have to deal with those potentially after sunset like we did last night. We could see some of that activity move in later this evening, but some drier air is around the corner. We'll update your weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Andrea. People who need assistance with their rent may find some relief during a special two day event in Aberdeen. Friday and Saturday tenants who've had trouble paying their rent because of hardships caused by COVID can see if they qualify for rental support. This workshop is also for landlords who have been affected by COVID. It all takes place at Aberdeen High School. This is the first time that uh, all the other events have been held down south. Right. And so Senator Hart Bryant was able to get them to come up to uh, Aberdeen. And Aberdeen will actually be the hub for North Mississippi. Now the COVID vaccine will also be available at this event. It's going on again Friday from 4.30 until 6 and then Saturday from 9.30 until 2 p.m. at Aberdeen High School. You can go to our website, wcbi.com, to get more information. Neighbors Helping Neighbors, that's the spirit behind the Community Benefit Committee's Blessed Boxes program. One of the organizers in the Lowndes County group spoke to Exchange Club members this morning. Rhonda Sanders says they have 16 boxes throughout the county for people to leave non-perishable foods and other essentials. Anyone can stop by and take what they need for themselves or families. Sanders says the group needs the community's help to keep those boxes stocked. Oh, it's a big increase of people not having. I get letters all the time and emails from families who have been laid off uh, during the pandemic uh, saying thank you. Uh, if the blessed box wasn't here, we don't know what we would have done until we get our next paycheck. So yes, it is helping people throughout Lowndes County. And Sanders works in community policing for the Lowndes County Sheriff's Department. She says you can bring your donations to the lobby of the Sheriff's Office. Celebrities across the region are putting on their dance shoes, getting ready for Dance Like the Stars, the biggest fundraiser for the Boys and Girls Clubs of North Mississippi. We'll highlight one of the celebrity dancers. That's coming up on WCBI News.
You're watching WCBI's News at 5 with Andrea Self. The biggest fundraiser for the Boys and Girls Clubs of North Mississippi takes place this weekend and it involves local celebrities dancing and of course collecting donations. Our Allie Martin checks in with one of those celebrity dancers. It is 7 o'clock on Tuesday morning and Dr. Laura Marion is on the dance floor. As an OBGYN, Dr. Marion has a full schedule, so when she signed up as a contestant in this year's Dancing Like the Stars, she had to work her dance lessons around her medical practice. Each celebrity dancer commits to 25 one-hour lessons with a pro instructor from the dance studio of Tupelo. It is a process. The initial few lessons are kind of just going over kind of where you see the routine going, what you're trying to convey to people, and then um, you add on each lesson. For her routine, Dr. Marion is dancing a contemporary rumba to the song It's Okay by the artist known as Nightbird. When you're standing here, you want to think. Andrew Davis is Dr. Marion's dance partner and instructor. He choreographed the routine, which will be performed during the event Saturday night at the Bancor South Arena. Whenever you're doing slower things, the tendency is to um, want to complete like a movement very quickly so we hit something. So one of the hardest things that you have to do in slower routines is try and extend and draw out the movement and be very patient. Um, but she's been very patient with me and um, she's done a wonderful job. For Dr. Marion, learning a ballroom dance routine is a new experience. Definitely it's more um, the artistic side of the brain instead of the science and medical side, so you have to kind of switch gears. The doctor has also been working hard on fundraising, finding creative ways to bring those dollars in, such as flocking people's yards, with pink flamingos. Basically you put the flamingos in someone's yard, ask for donations, and to um, move the flamingos to another yard, you ask for donations, and so they um, send, send the do donation via check or Venmo, and they nominate the next yard to get flocked. And so it's been fun uh, kind of sneaking around flocking people's yard with pink flamingos. Being a celebrity dancer is a big commitment and a lot of work. But Dr. Laura Marion says she would do it all again, the 7 a.m. practices and the fundraising to help the Boys and Girls Clubs of North Mississippi raise future leaders. In Tupelo, Allie Martin, WCBI News. Now, Allie will be co-hosting the event Saturday night at the Bancorp South Arena. You can get more information on how to watch the event live or how to donate. It's on our website, WCBI.com.